Now, the World Health uh, Science Council just held its first meeting on April 27th. This at a time when we are seeing a pickup in virus variant surges when it comes to infections, particularly in developing countries. What is your assessment then on this uh, emergence of these variants? Yeah, good morning, Sophie. Um, certainly the variants are of great concern, um, particularly because, uh, firstly, you know, like what we've seen with the um, so-called B117 UK variant, the uh, concern there is that particular variant increases the likelihood of spread. And uh, we saw that happening in the UK. Secondly, what variants can do is uh, perhaps increase the severity of, of the disease. And thirdly, and I think this is the one that, um, together with the increased transmissibility, is whether the variants will escape the, um, uh, the efficacy, I mean, the, the way the, va the vaccines uh, work. Um, and so there's intense research in all of these areas, and of course, um, the fourth is once uh, you've been vaccinated, will you become, uh, you know, will there be still be a, a risk of being infected with this new uh, variant? So these are the four um, reasons why uh, we are concerned about the increasing mutations and the increasing types of variants. And of course, with uh, what's happening in India at the moment, the question is, uh, is it Mm -hmm. because of uh, the emergence of the B1617 variant over there. But I think there's not enough uh, scientific evidence to say that it is or it's not due to the mm -hmm. B1617 variant that we're seeing the devastating uh, rates of infection in India at the moment. And Adiba, with that picture you've just painted, just how much more important then is it to quicken the pace of rollouts, especially in countries like India, when it comes to vaccines? Well, that's critical, isn't it? It's critical because um, the experience from countries that have rolled out uh, the vaccines uh, much more successfully than others, namely the UK, US and uh, Israel, is that it has dramatically reduced uh, the rates of severe infections, hospitalization, and death. And uh, what we're seeing in India is, you know, the the, um, uh, the health system just simply cannot cope with the numbers. And so um, we must do everything we can to reduce uh, the number of infections, particularly severe infections, which, um, you know, many of these uh, vaccines have shown to be highly successful at. Now, Adiba, vaccine deployment has been hampered uh, by limited access uh, to vaccines. There is inequity when it comes to uh, vaccine distribution. What can be done to better improve uh, that uh, deployment? Yeah, and uh, as we know, you know, 80% of the uh, more than a billion shots of vaccines that have uh, been given since uh, the vaccines uh, came into human use uh, unfortunately, have gone to wealthy nations and less than 2%. Um, I mean, the whole of the African continent has received less than 2% of the vaccines. Um, and unfortunately, now, as, as we know, we're seeing increasing infections uh, that is coming over to, to Asia, and, and there's concern that Southeast Asia is going to experience the next wave. Um, and so, you know, we, we, we must do everything we can to roll out the vaccine more equitu equitably, as you mentioned. Um, I'm, I'm happy to hear that Moderna uh, has just uh, announced um, that they're giving vaccines to the COVAX facility, but more needs to be done. I think there are uh, there's intense discussion into um, uh, the IP issues. Um, and, and really, the world must learn from uh, the HIV experience. You know, in, in terms of HIV, we waited far too long to ensure that um, antiretroviral rollout um, was, you know, uh, could benefit uh, low-income countries as it did um, wealthy countries. And, and we mustn't repeat that, that same mistake. And in, uh, in the case of COVID-19, the urgency is even greater because the disease is much more acute in terms of causing deaths, severe disease and deaths, 
than um, HIV was. But you know, the, the parallels are similar. Mm. And we have seen vaccine nationalism, of course, uh, complicating uh, the rollout of uh, doses to uh, developing countries. Uh, we have uh, Pfizer's uh, factories in the U.S. potentially looking uh, to export uh, those doses to countries that do need them the most. Uh, what other efforts should be made, particularly by developed countries, to uh, speed up this process? I think um, there have been developed countries that have, uh, you know, more vaccine than they need. And, um, you know, I, I believe uh, the U.S., for instance, is considering donating their vaccine. And so um, this, this must be done and must be done quickly, really, because, um, you know, uh, to use the cliche, no one is safe until everybody is safe. Now, funding is also an issue. Uh, we have the WHO uh, identifying that there's still $19 billion of funding shortfall when it comes to ACT accelerator program. Uh, do we need to uh, ramp up funding towards this effort? Yeah, absolutely, because, you know, um, vaccine is only one half of the equation, isn't it? Um, there are other, uh, and in terms of the accelerator, accelerator program you know there are other concerns there's medications uh, for low uh, income countries to purchase there's PPE there's the whole gamut of consumables and uh, medications uh, in addition to vaccines that um, we need to cater for to really um, you know bring this an end to this pandemic as soon as we can now, Deepa, you have been drawing parallels to the COVID pandemic, to the HIV epidemic. Uh, what is the outlook then for the framework around uh, the future of health as well as the human rights framework um, when you take a look at uh, what's been going on? I think if you look back um, in the 40 years of the HIV pandemic, uh, nations that have um, successfully uh, controlled the, the pandemic um, generally um, have paid more attention to the human rights issues, to equity, um, to a whole of society approach, to commu greater community involvement. So the, the, the framework and the principles are there, and, um, and, and not just the framework and the principles, but the scientific evidence um, is there that uh, if you employ those um, you know, those principles when you roll out programs or when you strategize in, in your response, um, you are generally going to be more successful. So, um, you know, we, we have those lessons. We've, we've done it over the last uh, three decades, four decades of the HIV response. We know what to do. We just need to implement it um, for a different virus with a different tempo and a different um, clinical presentation, no doubt. But I think um, the basic principles uh, are the same.